Welcome everyone to the Open Leaders X launch party, the digital version, yay. Um, if you were at MozFest, you may have seen us in person sharing these presentations and we wanted to do this for um, our online audience since many of these are online programs and uh, we wanted to get a good recording because we had some mic issues there. But my name's Abby, um, I'm one of the hosts and Chad, do you want to introduce yourself? Okay. Hey, wait. I'm Chad, the other host. Yeah. Um, so we've been running Open Leaders the past few years, and we're really excited with Open Leaders X, seeing people take this open leadership program, adapt it for their own audiences, and just run with it. So we're going to be hearing from four of these new programs today, um, and we're really excited. So uh, you can sign your name in the doc. I hope you have the Google Doc. The short link is mazlamzl.la slash olx dash week dash eight dash b again i probably should have thought of a sh better short link but if you're in there uh, you can sign your name in the roll call and then add your questions in the doc as we're going through um, and if you're watching the recording there are links in that doc so you can get into contact with any of the people presenting today so with that i'm going to start sharing my screen And we'll pass it off to Kosa. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Chris Coleman. I'm an artist and professor out here at the University of Denver in Colorado in the USA. Uh, and I've started something called the Clinic for Open Source Arts. And the Clinic for Open Source Arts is focused on the health of open source tools uh, made for creativity and for artists. And so, um, uh, COSA has been a long story that stems from my work, both trying to support the tools that my students are using and that other artists are using around the world to um, make creative things. Uh, but even comes down to uh, early on making a tool called Maxwino uh, that connects Arduinos and Macs. Uh, but I made it an op open source tool um, originally just so I could make something for my students and make their lives just a little bit easier um, so that they could spend more time on making art and less time on learning technology. Uh, and I think a lot of these open source tools are really important uh, in this space, uh, thinking about arts and technology. And so COSA has been taking on this challenge uh, and trying to address some of the issues that I've been seeing uh, in the field overall. Um, next slide. Uh, and that includes a number, basically uh, four main parts. Uh, the first part being innovation. Uh, COSA has been really thinking about how to support uh, tools that uh, are already being created, but also thinking deeply about what tools should be created and where those tools should be coming from, um, at, as opposed to a top-down approach. Uh, next slide. We've also been thinking quite a bit about access how do people have access to these tools, not just in the can I download it sense, uh, but also thinking about accessibility issues uh, such as low vision or screen reader or um, other tools that might actually be uh, better suited to particular kinds of artists that might have different kinds of abilities. Next slide. Uh, and also thinking about sustainability of the tools themselves. Uh, we all know stories of tools that are created and maybe we start to build our lives and our artwork around them uh, and then that tool sort of disappears uh, with a, an update uh, and uh, there's nobody there left to make it keep uh, to, to help keep it alive and so thinking about what does the life cycle of a tool actually look like and how does the community around that uh, provide a healthy and sustainable situation and that brings us to the final piece next slide which is the communities themselves. Um, I've been really inspired by some of the language that uh, Lauren McCarthy has been building around the P5JS project, uh, which is a creative coding language uh, that's freely available and downloadable online. Um, and it's, it's really um, geared towards getting artists up and going uh, into textual coding. And, when she built the project, she really started redefining what a contributor is. Uh, and as opposed to thinking about contributor as just people who contribute to the code itself, thinking about contrib contribution as a much bigger picture of, you know, somebody who makes tutorials as a contributor, somebody who downloads the software and tells somebody else about it that is a contributor, somebody who makes something with the software is a contributor. 
And so once you start to envelop anybody and everybody into this contributor space, then you have to think much more broadly about what contribution means uh, and how to encourage all of these different kinds of contribution. And uh, that leads me to the program that I'm participating in Open Leaders for, next slide, uh, which is the Community Leaders Program 2020. Um, and uh, essentially what we're lo looking at doing is training community leaders uh, who will, um, who will uh, basically uh, help these communities, um, help think about contributions, and be some of the primary organizers uh, between maybe those people who are building code uh, and people who are uh, dealing with the larger community around a tool. So um, I'm interested in people who uh, might want to be those leaders and don't even know it yet. I'm interested in mentors who would help train these kind of leaders. I'm interested in experts who have advice uh, in this realm of how to build healthy communities and lead them. Um, and also, uh, I'm looking for ideas about which communities might need help. There's lots of open source tools for creativity, and I'm finding new ones every day, literally. I found a new one last night. <laughs> uh, and so I need your help in finding those, uh, finding all those people and those uh, projects. So the application process will begin in April 2020, and you can learn more and give me feedback and sign up at clinicopensourcearts.org. Thank you. Um, can I just go ahead? Hi, I hope everyone can hear me. Uh, I'm Esther, I'm presenting Digital Browsers. I'm the president of Digital Browsers, and with me is Lupa, who's also the vice president. And we're very excited to be presenting community leaders for internet health and actually having this visual call this virtual call is very true to our work uh, given that we work with young people coming from different underrepresented communities and this means that we are always communicating virtually seeing how we can connect seeing how we can bring our things together and this is what the internet health report truly is about and community leaders for internet health will be about open campaigning for the internet health report and how we can use open tools to bring stories to life about our community coming from a grassroots perspective. So uh, in the in the in the slide we're going to see in the we're going to see a chart from the Internet Governance Forum 2017. This speaks to the story of the grassroots and how we started. Uh, we were young people, yeah, children from different parts of the globe. And we met at the Internet Governance Forum to use the IDF program that introduced us to Internet Governance Principles. And what we saw when we attended the Internet Governance Forum was that there was a low representation from groups that face a high level of internet health rights uh, abuses. And we also saw that there was uh, a low participation, a lower participation of the female gender. And we thought, how can we as young people come on this scene? How can we talk about the issues affecting us, um, not just as youth, not just as females, but participating actively in the different topics that are affecting our community? So, through the community leaders for the Internet Health Support, we are going to have many different perspectives, which I'm going to in the next slide. Um, we're going to, to look at adopting tools to work open and lead open. So we're going to choose a small number of community leaders and see how can we work together, how can we create a community where we're using tools, sharing tools, and sharing knowledge on how to use open campaigning in order to bring positive change in our community. And uh, also we want to spotlight community issues by doing the grassroots uh, their voices so that you can feed into the internet health report and we're going to match our community leaders for four weeks with some mentors so that they can feel supported in this process of growth and in this process of adopting new ways of 
looking at the issues affecting our community. Um, next so this is this will happen in six weeks, and uh, we will talk more about how we're going to work towards this intersection of world with Um. Okay. So. Hi everyone, my name is Ufa. I hope all of you can hear me. And it's nice to meet all of you virtually per se. Um, we have here our journey for the participants on the um, program. Um, the program is gonna run for six weeks and in these six weeks, we're going to um, take all of them on different exercises that would enable them and give them a platform to develop an idea that would eventually turn out to be a cool project that helps with, that helps with um, advocating for internet health in their region. And um, next slide, please. Um, so, like Esther already said, we are Digital Grassroots, and Digital Grassroots is an organization that is um, focused on building youth communities. So we are um, we have done a lot of work with um, advocating for digital literacy through our ambassadors program. And next slide, please. And next slide, please. So we've mentored over a hundred people and led over. Um, we've current, we currently run three programs, and all of these programs have been in collaboration with amazing organizations. So um, we're always looking for different ways to partner with people. We're involved the implementation of our OLX program. We hope to um, invite everyone that is available to. Um, join us as a contributor. We want to hear from you to know how you can add to the program. And next slide, please. And so basically, next slide, please. You can contact us when we open our call for application. Our URL, you can reach us on that website and you can also apply to be a mentor. Thank you. Hi, I'm Cara Delamarc. I am the open source community manager at CloudBeats, working with the Jenkins X open source project. And what Jenkins X does is it will automate your continuous integration and continuous delivery, so CI, CD, on Kubernetes. Um, I'm also a board director and co-organizer of CodeBar. So CodeBar runs regular programming workshops for individuals underrepresented in tech. We have nearly 30 chapters around the world now. You can find out more about CodeBar at CodeBar.io. It's a very, very good community to get involved with. I highly recommend it. I love it. But I'm here today to talk to you about Posse, which is people in open source software and engineering. So Posse is going to be a peer-led mentorship program that will run over approximately a two-month period. And it is it has been incubated through Mozilla's Open Leaders program. And what we'll be doing is taking a lot of the principles that we've learned during the Open Leaders program and sharing them with participants in open source projects. And our participants of the Posse program, we're thinking of having people who are deeply involved in open source. So it'll be for people who are project maintainers or core contributors. And we would like to, to share together, to have this really be peer-led. So we'll be sharing our experiences in open source, considering open leadership principles and how they apply to open source. During the program, we'll have um, a structured earn learning arc where we talk about uh, open source licenses. We consider different types of open source programs. Mozilla has done a lot of research in that area. And we think about how those licenses that are available for open source projects may be mapped to the different types and what would be best for certain projects. Then we'll also be talking about metrics and how you measure the health of your project in your community. We'll look at the metrics that GitHub gives to all uh, public repos and projects on, on GitHub. And we'll also look at dev stats. And the Chaos Research Project has a number of interesting tools for measuring community health. 
And then we'll look at communities and how to grow your community. And we'll think about how best to onboard new contributors, thinking about contributing guidelines in depth, depth, also thinking about pathways to leadership for members of your community, and considerations around diversity and, and inclusion as well. And lastly, we'll be looking at sustainability in open source. So we'll be considering ideas around funding for open source projects, as well as avoiding burnout for those working heavily in open source. Um, and one of the things we would really like the participants to engage with is to think about doing a case study relating to the open source project that they are involved in working with. And so we'll take some of the ideas that we've been discussing and learning together and then ask questions around those ideas and formulate maybe some metrics that they could start using for their project. They can do a case study where they try and implement a new initiative for their project and just see how it goes. And at the end of the program, we'll circle back after a couple of weeks and present our case studies to each other. Even if it's just early days in your case study, I think it's interesting to consider what people are trying, how they're going about measuring it, how they're implementing it, and what initial reaction they're getting. So hopefully this will be really helpful for people who are participating uh, extensively in open source. <clears throat> the idea is that it would be very supportive and very, um, very much a sharing community. So applications will start early 2020, and we're looking for participants in the program, as well as experts. So if you have thought deeply about, say, funding or governance or open source licenses, any of these individual topics, diversity and inclusion, then, then please do contact us um, expressing your interest in maybe being an expert in that area. So you can visit the website at posse.community, and on the website there's a link to a form that uh, we would love for you to fill out, just detailing a little bit about yourself and how to contact you so that when the applications open, we can send you more information about that, as well as discuss more if you have any questions about the program or if there's anything in particular that you wanted to discuss vis-a-vis -vis an expertise you may have and how it may fit with the program. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, this is Shaina. Uh, I'm here to talk about the Healthier AI program that we'll be launching soon. Uh, so I want to answer the question that why uh, we are doing this program. Um, since we all know uh, that nowadays uh, data systems are being employed, uh, deployed at a very large scale. And uh, there's nothing easy about data ethics um, in an age where virtually everything we do uh, leaves a data trail and uh, more decisions are being taken uh, for us by machines, uh, which range from anything uh, from how much we pay for health insurance to probably who your life partner should be. Um, so, and the excitement of new technology uh, comes with uh, fears and it feels like uh, regulators are playing uh, catch up with tech firms that create these innovations and businesses are exploiting them. Uh, I believe a community can help uh, build trust. Um, our community needs uh, to collectively voice expectations for responsible data use. Uh, hence, uh, this is me and uh, my uh, colleague Pranshu Khanna are launching this 15-week uh, cohort, uh, which is called Healthier AI. Uh, the participants in this program will drive conversations about ethics in data science and AI. And uh, we aim to empower uh, participants uh, to become healthier AI advocates and to create uh, environments, uh, curriculums, uh, and tools to support the community and uh, the ethics challenges that we face. Next slide. Uh, yeah. So, um, as I said, this is going to be a 15-week mentorship and training program, which is inspired by uh, the Mozilla Open Leaders Program. Uh, next slide. Yeah, uh, so how you can contribute to this program, um, we, um, we have mentorship and participation involved in this cohort. And uh, if you are a mentor or an expert uh, who have worked on AI applications, either in software or hardware, or uh, even in analytics and data science, uh, we are happy to uh, hear from you and uh, 
take any help that you can give us. Uh, so our applications are opening from uh, November uh, 10, actually. And uh, follow us on uh, Twitter and uh, go on the website healthierai.org to know uh, how you can uh, apply. Uh, we'll be uh, publishing our uh, Google Form soon for the applications. Uh, next. Uh, participation uh, for anybody who is interested to participate in the Healthier AI cohort. Uh, if you have project ideas that can uh, create tools uh, or and curriculums that can contribute to make AI healthier, we are very uh, happy uh, to hear from you and encourage you to apply. Uh, if you have ideas or, or you can showcase some use cases uh, or experiments that can help us uh, create some guidelines and uh, checklist uh, on how data can be used responsibly. Again, we are happier to hear from you. So uh, for participation applications, again, watch the same space, uh, healthierai.org. And uh, it'll be better if you uh, follow us on Twitter to get all the latest notifications about when the uh, applications are opening and how you can apply. Um, so yeah, next slide. Um, yeah, the program will start in January and it will last uh, for 15 weeks uh, and you'll have uh, weekly calls with your mentor who will guide you through this uh, entire program uh, to complete your project. Next. Thank you. Amazing. Um, I'll stop sharing that. But just, uh, yeah, a huge round of applause or like sparkle fingers, I guess, in video <laughs> for all of our presenters. It was really great hearing about all of your programs. <laughs> Thanks, Pratchett. I appreciate that. Um, so I'll just look through the doc to see if there's any questions that have come up. And yeah, there's a question that's already been responded to about like, how can we enroll? And then all the info's there for the Healthier AI cohort. Um, oh, wow, there's some new volunteers. Yes, volunteers coming in at the bottom. Fantastic. That's amazing. So yeah, if you're watching this, you're not really sure where to fit in, uh, put your info there in the new volunteer section, and we'll try to connect you with the appropriate cohort or the appropriate person, maybe someone from the Tuesday group, if that, that makes a bit more sense. But do put your name there. That's exciting. Three people here. Um, and people interested. Oh, someone's interested in COSA, another one in Posse. So good job. Presenting. <laughs> Um, if you're watching the recording, um, you can reach out directly to these programs using those links. We might not be monitoring this uh, doc for too much longer. Um, but Chad, anything else we should add? Uh, I just want to say thank you again to everyone who joined us for uh, today's call online. Thank you to all the presenters for all of your incredible work over the past eight weeks, nine weeks, ten weeks. Uh, MozFest makes things fuzzy uh, to, to launch your programs. It's really amazing. Um, I hope you all feel uh, an extraordinary sense of pride at having pulled these programs together and structured them so well in that amount of time. And super looking forward to seeing not only all of you again, but also others you bring along in the open leadership journey with you through your program. So thank you. Awesome. And with that, I guess, uh, yeah, we'll say bye and we'll end the stream. <laughs> thank you to Abby and Chad. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, where did Lewis go? How do I end the stream? <laughs> <laughs> Lewis